once you pop the wheels out. One, two, three. All right, they're out. Yeah, they're out. I'm slowly letting it down. Okay. Since 1985, we've had a solar car team. We're the oldest solar car team in the country. Guide the rear wheel. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Part of it's to test out new technology to show what's feasible in terms of solar energy and electric cars and stuff. The other part is just to build stuff and have fun. <laughs> well, we've had it past 80 miles an hour. I've gone faster than 80, yeah. There was a race in North America. We averaged 52, 51 yeah. miles we've, an hour. And we were taking a lot of back roads, like driving yeah. through a lot of towns, and we had to stick to the speed limits from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Like you don't drive at night. You know, we also don't have headlights. <laughs> This is a steering wheel. It's just a simple bike handlebar as you turn back and forth. This is the um, regenerative braking, which has the motor put power back into the battery pack. This box here is what would turn on and off the array. This is the suspension, double A arm. Solar car racing wheels, actually, they're, they're specifically for solar cars. This is our rear trailing arm and the motor, which is built into the wheel. The motor is on the back. It's direct drive, so there's no losses in transfer. This is the motor, six kilowatt motor. This is the motor controller, which sends the signals to the motor, which controls it. These are the, the battery packs. The battery pack stores six kilowatt hours. And these are the power trackers, which take the energy from the array. It allocates it in the most efficient way possible, so you can get the most power out of your array, depending on which, how, what the angle is of the sun hitting the, each panel. These are the hydraulic brakes. This is the accelerator. In some ways, it's simpler because we all use just steel tubes and everything is space frame style, but it basically has the same components as a standard car, minus all of the fancy electronics and GPS systems. So, you know, sunlight comes down, strikes the cells. It basically creates electricity. We pump it into our battery pack. Just with a normal pedal throttle and, and brake, you can push the power in the batteries through a motor, and you go. It's designed to be as efficient as possible. And then you apply a brake, the motor actually generates electricity back into the batteries as well. Right now it's not very user friendly. Uh, it's just designed to go as fast as possible. It's an engineering challenge. And before our car rolled, it was waterproof and you could drive through the rain and hail and stuff, and that's what we did. But it's, it's seen a lot of miles. On this. This car probably has about 10,000 miles on it. It's gone across Australia twice, and it's gone across North America once, plus lots of other driving around. We have the record for the fastest average speed for an American solar car North in the solar car, solar car race. It was 57 miles an hour. It was in Australia in October. So, yeah. so it was basically their summer in the middle of the outback. On a day like today, you still get some energy, but it's very little. You would be basically running on just your battery pack alone. In this kind of weather, we'd probably get like 1 50th of the power that we would get on a, on, a, on a nice sunny day. You'll never have a car that runs purely off of solar energy. You're limited by how much sunlight hits the car. Solar power depends on being able to collect a lot of solar energy. So like the area of a car will determine how much solar energy you can get. So if you go on the estimate that there's one kilowatt per meter squared, even if you had 100% efficient solar cells, you'd only be getting eight or nine kilowatts, which is 20 horsepower maybe. That's a pretty big load. The, the other main factor, this car has extremely little drag. It has about, when you're going down the highway, it has about as much drag as your hand sticking out of a car window. Just your hand. Most cars have a lot more drag than that, and even the most streamlined of cars will never get their drag down enough to be able to use just solar energy. If you have solar panels on top of a car, then you could charge your battery pack slowly, like if you leave it parked for a while. Some cars currently have that option. It'll never be pure solar. They're too fragile, and the manufacturing money just isn't there. The solar array, we purchased it for about $80,000. The solar cells themselves cost 50000 I think, and we got it at a 90% discount. So the array is actually worth half a million. Yeah, and, <laughs> and in its current encapsulated form, this would go for almost a million dollars, because these are the same kinds of solar panels that would go up on, say, a satellite that you would never want to break. 
So we got that massive discount. I mean, the cells have slight visual defects, so they were rejects, but we got the cells at a very good price. I think it was a, an elementary school kid asked us why we didn't buy a Lamborghini instead of buying a solar car. Because <laughs> they cost, this thing probably costs more. Are you ready to pull, push One, and pull? Two, two three. Ah!